Hey everyone and welcome back to Hoffman Engineering. If you've been waiting for a fast, feature-packed 3D printer that won't break the bank, this might be the one. The Anycubic Cobra 3 V2 combo brings real hardware upgrades, smart software improvements, and multicolored printing magic thanks to the Ace Pro system. In this video, we're diving deep into everything this printer has to offer, from blazing fast speeds and automatic bed leveling, to seamless multicolored prints and filament backup features that actually work. Whether you're new to 3D printing or looking to upgrade, stick around. This V2 is more than just a refresh. It might just be the most capable and affordable multicolored printer on the market right now. Before we begin, this Cobra 3 V2 combo was sent for me to review by Anycubic. As with all of my reviews, they aren't paying me for this review, and everything I say is my own honest opinion after using this printer for the last month. My videos do have affiliate links in the description, so if you're interested in anything you see in any of my videos, from printers, filament, or accessories, you can use those links to help support my channel. We appreciate it. The Cobra 3 V2 is a filament-based 3D printer. It is the latest in the Cobra 3 series of printers. You can check out my reviews of the original Cobra 3, Cobra S1, and Cobra 3 Max linked below. Anycubic has taken the year's worth of feedback from the launch of the original Cobra 3 and implemented both hardware and software updates worthy of a V2. And since many of these changes are software-based, Anycubic will be backporting those improvements to the original Cobra 3. So if you own the original, you'll get access to many of these changes as well. But starting with the hardware improvements, the Cobra 3 V2 comes with an upgraded nozzle, the same style as found on the Cobra S1. This improved nozzle should prevent the leaky nozzle that was a common complaint from the first batch of Cobra 3 printers. The nozzle is a standard 0.4mm brass nozzle, so be wary of abrasive filaments. The hot end has a maximum temperature of 300 degrees, so you can easily work with higher temperature materials. The Y-axis also sees hardware improvements. The Y-axis rail width has increased from 40mm to 60mm. That gives the print bed more support, increasing the accuracy of the auto bed leveling, as well as helping with stability at higher print speeds. And speaking of print speeds, the Cobra 3 V2 can print up to 600 millimeters per second. This printer is blazing fast, easily able to keep up when using filament designed for high-speed printing. The Cobra 3 V2 keeps Anycubic's Levi-Q 3.0 auto bed leveling features. This automatically levels the bed, as well as ensures the perfect Z offset. No need for adjusting the nozzle offset or baby stepping that first layer height. I had perfect bottom layers on all of my test prints. Along with hardware improvements, there are a number of software improvements. First is an expanded print volume. By optimizing how the printer moves, Anycubic was able to increase the print area by 5 millimeters in both the X and Y axes, for a total of 255 by 255 by 260 millimeters. That's a 4% larger print volume just from some software updates. This larger print volume will be coming to the owners of the original Cobra 3 sometime in the third quarter of 2025. Anycubic also says that regional bed leveling is coming soon to both the original and the V2. Regional leveling will only probe the area of the bed that you are about to print on. That will drastically reduce the time needed to level the bed before starting to print. But that feature isn't available yet, so I couldn't test it out. The Cobra 3 V2 retains the rest of the features from the original. It uses the same magnetic, flexible spring steel build plates. Both sides have a textured PEI coating, so if one side gets damaged, you can flip it over and use the second side. I had no adhesion issues with any of my tests. Prints stuck perfectly, yet were easy to remove after printing with a quick flex. The bed is remarkably consistent temperature-wise. When set to 60 degrees Celsius, the entirety of the bed was between 57 and 61 degrees Celsius. The bed is rated for temperatures of up to 110 degrees Celsius. The Cobra 3 V2 has a single Z motor with dual Z-axis rods connected by a belt at the top. This keeps the threaded rods in sync and improves print stability. At the front, we see the I.O. ports for the Ace Pro, two USB ports, and the touchscreen controls. The 4.3 inch full color touchscreen is very responsive to the touch. The menus are nicely laid out and easy to navigate. The screen itself can tilt, so you can adjust the angle if needed. However, the viewing angles side to side are not that great. You have to be looking pretty straight on to get the clearest view. The printer runs Cobra OS, which is Anycubic's version of the Clipper firmware. This modern firmware allows for advanced features like input shaping and pressure advance. Those features eliminate ghosting and echo artifacts, and allow for excellent print quality at higher print speeds. The main selling point of the Cobra 3 series of printers is the integration with the Anycubic Color Engine, or ACE Pro. This magic box holds up to four rolls and filaments, and allows for printing in multiple colors in a single print. You can use 
one Ace Pro for four color prints, or use two Ace Pros together for eight colors in a single print. This works by feeding all four colors through Bowden tubes over to the hot end. When the Cobra 3 V2 is done printing one color, it moves the hot end over to the left side where it pushes a lever which cuts the filament in the hot end, and then it retracts the old color and starts to extrude the new color. It'll continue to extrude until the old color has been purged. Then a magnetic spring-loaded wiper will fling the filament poop off to the side. The Ace Pro that comes with the Cobra 3 V2 is the same model that comes with the Cobra 3 Max. It is slightly different than the Ace Pro from the original Cobra 3. There are subtle molding changes. There are no seal surfaces on the back or the sides. The lid has screw holes, but it does not have the extra spool guides on the lid like the model for the Cobra S1 has. The Ace Pro is also a filament dryer. You can set it to a temperature between 35 and 55 degrees Celsius and a time between 2 and 24 hours, and the built-in heater will keep the inside of the Ace Pro at that temperature. My thermal camera tests show that the heater does a good job at maintaining that temperature. The fans blow up and around the spools, so even the spools that aren't being printed get a pretty consistent coverage. I had no issues with filament being overheated. When set to 45 degrees Celsius, the hottest spot was only 47 degrees. The Ace Pro can also act as an advanced filament backup. Rather than just alerting you when you run out of filament mid-prints, the Ace Pro can automatically switch to a different spool of the same material and color when it runs out. This makes it extremely efficient to use every last bit of filament on a spool, as it will just automatically start using the next spool when it runs out. This feature is amazing. And while you can use any type or brand of filament you want, the Ace Pro can read the RFID tags on any Cubic's own spools of filaments. It will automatically detect the type and the color of the filament and set the Ace Pro settings accordingly. Some community members have created programmers for custom RFID tags, such as DNG Crafts Project. Let me know if you'd be interested in a video exploring these. The Cobra 3 V2 arrives mostly assembled. All you have to do is screw on the hot end, plug in some cables, screw on the screen, and screw on the wiper mechanism. Then route all the Bowden tubes from the Ace Pro, and you're ready to go. In total, it took about 20 minutes before I was running through the initial setup. It will also run through a self-check and auto-calibration when you first turn it on, leveling the bed and running a vibration sweep to calibrate the input shape. It was an extremely smooth unboxing and assembly. I was printing in no time. The Cobra 3 V2 works best when using the Anycubic Slicer next. This is Anycubic's fork of Orca Slicer, and includes many built-in profiles for most of Anycubic's printers and materials. Setting up a new printer is just as easy as selecting it from the list. And once your printer is connected to your Wi-Fi network, just scanning a QR code binds the printer to your Anycubic Cloud account. You can send jobs to the printer remotely, as well as monitor the prints and see a live view from the camera. The Cobra 3 V2 includes a 720p camera, but you will have to print the camera mounts using the pre-sliced file on the printer. Anycubic says that the camera feed has improved, but I don't see much of a difference. The time lapses it generates are fine, I guess. They aren't the prettiest time lapses, and I think that they are one frame per layer, which results in two plus minute time lapses for larger prints, but it does show the object being printed. However, the live view is pretty underwhelming, with single digit frame rates most of the time. I hope to see that improve in future updates. Multicolored printing is also extremely easy in the Anycubic Slicer Next. You can sync filament from the Ace Pro, which pre-populates the color and material type. You can also customize the colors, and it'll do its best to match up the desired colors with the colors loaded when you go to print. You can also easily paint colors onto any model. Take this old 3D scan of myself. I was easily able to paint the colors, and soon I had a multicolored print of myself. The slicer has seen its fair share of features added over the last year. Recently, they added the ability to customize filament purge amounts between colors. This lets you save material and print time by optimizing the purge amount based on how heavily pigmented the colors are. Switching from white to black, you probably don't need that much, but switching from black back to white would need a lot of purge to fully clean out the old black. You are limited to 900 cubic millimeters of purge though, and I found that that wasn't enough for my super heavily pigmented Sunlu black when switching from my beige color. So you might find color combinations that don't work as well even at max purge. However, the default settings usually did an excellent job, and the amount of poop during multicolored prints is a lot less than I saw with the original Cobra 3, and especially compared with the Cobra S1's default. The default slicing profiles are pretty good though. One word of caution though is to stick with the classic wall generation mode. At first I was confused why they weren't using the modern Arachne wall generation mode, which can vary the wall thickness to help fill gaps and improve surface finishes. But there must be some bugs present, because I found situations where the Arachne wall generation mode resulted in bad layer lines. As you can see in this two-colored cube, the classic wall generation cube looked fine, but switch to Arachne and you see two really bad layer artifacts visible within the preview. This is the same issue that happened with this dice tower. The Arachne wall generation resulted in these bad layers. So until that bug is fixed, just use the classic wall generation. 
AnyCubic has a mobile app, where you can monitor your printer, control it remotely, and it'll even send you push notifications to keep you updated. The Cobra 3 V2 has all kinds of monitoring built in, so if the Ace Pro detects a tangle, or some old filament is brittle and breaks, then the app will immediately alert you. And then of course, once a print is finished, you get that notification as well. So with all of the specs out of the way, let's take a look at how well the Cobra 3 V2 prints. Thank you Sunlu for providing the filament to use for my testing. If you are interested in high quality filaments, check out Sunlu. They have a large variety of materials and colors, and are sure to have just the filament for your next project. Starting with the included sample files, they include a 12 minutes and a 15 minute Benchy. The 12 minute Benchy is pretty rough. It finished and shows off the speed of the printer, but I wouldn't call this an amazing print. However, the 15 minute Benchy is miles better. While there is some stringing presence, this Benchy turned out much better. And let's compare it to a standard Benchy that I sliced myself. This Benchy took 45 minutes to print and turned out perfect. Consistent layers, great bridging, overall this is a good result. So pushing the printer to eke out every bit of the 600 mm per second print speeds won't give you the best results, but slowing things down just a little makes a dramatic improvement while still being extremely fast. The included flexible shark turned out well, the layers are just as consistent, and the top surface is pretty smooth. We can tell that they aren't using the arachne wall generation mode due to the very small gaps on the inside corners of the top surface though. Let's get the Ace Pro involved. First up, a simple two color Benchy. I love the two tone effect, and I think that it came out really good. There is no color mixing, and even the small trim on the cabin looks great. And the amount of poop is pretty good. This Benchy weighs 11 grams and produced 94 grams of poop waste. The original Cobra 3 produced 118 grams of poop for the same prints. So the V2 settings use 24 grams less when printing. Awesome. Does anyone know what you call a group of EVs? I'm going to call it an excellent print. These four color DVs turned out amazing. While there is a lot of wasted filament when switching between colors, the amount of wasted material only depends on the number of color changes and layers. So it's the same amount of waste whether you are printing one of something or many of them. So you might as well pack the plate full. The only defect on these prints are the whites of the eyes. You can tell that that white is mainly gray. It had a tough time switching from black to white. And we can see this even more clearly on this Fue Coco print. This Sunlu black filament is very heavily pigmented and did not cleanly purge when switching from either the red or the white filaments. While the print itself is really good, nice layers, no obvious artifacts, the bleeding of the colors ruined the look. This bust of myself turned out very nice. It was easy to paint the colors on in the Anycubic slicer next and printed very well. That is, after I swapped out the black that I originally used with brown. The black was just too much for this beige filament, so I cancelled the print swapped it out for the brown, and it turned out really good. With the multicolor test out of the way, let's take a look at some of the larger prints. This Captain America bust looks incredible. The flat slopes of the sides and back are smooth and consistent, and there is no ringing artifacts around the hard edges thanks to the input shaping. This is a great showing for the Cobra 3 V2. This dice tower also turned out great, except for the very obvious flaws from the Arachne wall generation bug. But this same artifact happened on my Cobra S1, so it's not an issue with the printer, but rather that of the slicer. Ignoring those bad couple of layers that would be fixed by using classic wall generation, the rest of the prints is extremely smooth. The 0.16mm layer lines look awesome and give a very smooth effect. This dice tower has a lot of overhangs and individual pillars, and it also looks incredible. There is some slight stringing between a few of the pillars, but overall this is an excellent result for the Cobra 3 V2. So in conclusion, I love to see Anycubic iterating on their products. They took a year's worth of feedback back and brought both hardware and software improvements to create the Cobra 3 V2 combo. I had a good experience with the original Cobra 3 when it came out, and I am happy that my experience is just as good with the V2. Only taking 20 minutes between unboxing and starting my first print is awesome, and I was getting high quality results throughout my tests. The combo with the Ace Pro is amazing and definitely worth it. The ability to print in 4 different colors or materials can unlock an entirely new world of 3D printing, and if 4 colors isn't enough for you, you can add on a second Ace Pro for up to 8 colors in a single print. The other features of the Ace Pro, from the filament dryer to the filament backup, make it easier to produce high quality prints over and over again. I love seeing improvements on the software side, both with the new features in the printer's firmware, as well as on the slicer side. Since the launch of the original Cobra 3, we've seen features such as object skip and filament specific purge amounts be implemented, and I can't wait to see the local bed leveling get shipped and play around with that, and I'm happy that these improvements will also be backported so that owners of the original Cobra 3 can get access to those 
those upgrades. Any cubic isn't just leaving those early adopters out to dry. I do hope they work out the bugs around the arachne wall generation though. I see people on the subreddits running into that issue pretty regularly. But improvements have been consistent, so I'm hopeful that these small kinks will be ironed out. Any cubic is on a roll, and I think they knocked it out of the park with the Cobra 3v2. The Cobra 3v2 combo is currently on sale for 399 US dollars at the time of recording. That's right, both the Printer and an Ace Pro for only 399 US dollars. This is cheaper than when I pre-ordered the original Cobra 3 combo last year. That also makes makes the Cobra 3 V2 combo the cheapest multicolored bed slinger on the market, beating out both the Creality High combo and the Bamboo Labs A1 combo at the time of recording. An amazing value. If you want 8 colors, you can purchase the 8 color combo for 678 US dollars. Or you could always wait and add on a second Ace Pro sometime in the future. The Ace Pro currently sells for 289 US dollars, so it's only about a $10 discount if you buy the 8 color combo to begin with. If you are looking for an excellent entry level 3D printer, with with all of the modern features, as well as the ability to seamlessly print in multiple colors, then I would highly recommend the Anycubic Cobra 3 V2. So thank you all for watching my review of the Anycubic Cobra 3 V2. What was your favorite feature? What features do you think it's missing? Let me know in the comments below. I have plenty of other upcoming projects and reviews, so if you like what you saw here, consider subscribing so you don't miss out on those videos coming soon. And if you are still in the market for a new 3D printer, why not check out my first look of the Cobra S1, Anycubic's multicolored Core XY printer. It might be just what you are looking for. So thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.